Hey everyone, today's class is going to be on advanced functions. Wait, so what is a function again? So we learned in a previous class that a function is actually a set of organized repeatable code that is used to do something specific. Each block in snap is a function. So how do you use functions? Functions are used to make certain things simpler to use. For example, on the left side, we see the exponent function, which is able to multiply the number on the left by itself a certain number of times, the right side of the block. We can also see the block on the right, but it is also longer and requires the use of two smaller blocks. In general, you want to use the block on the left for repeated multiplication. In this animation, a block is being created using the Make a Block button on the bottom of the screen. The block is available in any category, not just motion. After clicking Make a Block, you can choose what type of function you want, a command, a reporter, a predicate, and you can name your function. Looking at this animation over here, if we do green flag click and then dance, and then click run over and over again, we can see that the dance function is running. So what is a parameter? A parameter is anything you give a function to do something with. You can tell the move something steps block how many steps you want to move your sprite. You can tell the letter one of word block a, what letter you want of a given word, and B, the actual word. So now we can make our own functions with parameters. The function we are creating here using, uses a parameter. By clicking the plus button, you can create a parameter. The function myNumber takes a number and reports the same number back. If we look over here and we click the plus button, we can add a parameter and click input name and we can call the input name something, and then we can report the number again. We can click apply and OK, and we can use my number as a reporter, as shown. Typing in an input of five, we can use a green flag click block and run the whole thing, and of course the sprite will print five. A useful example of a function with multiple parameters is a substring. A substring is part of a string. A substring takes three values, the string, the starting letter position, and the ending letter position. And it can report the part of the string that fits the parameters. If you are familiar with Java, you will know that this actually differs from the standard Java convention of the substring. Both the start and the end are inclusive, and the indices start from one, not zero. However, if you don't know Java, it's fine. You can use this convention. This is a substring function with multiple parameters. A script variable is a temporary variable that isn't stored outside of this function. The script variable is set to nothing, and then it becomes equal to itself plus a certain letter of the string until the end of the for loop. Pause the video and take a minute to understand what exactly this script is doing. This is a more complex implementation of a string, of a function. Before you look at this and get scared, let's break it down first. This new method is called a reverse method. This is able to reverse a string. So by inputting a string such as hello and the length of the string, you can report O-L-L-E-H, which is the opposite of hello. The function first checks if length equals one. If it is equal to one, then we can return the input itself because the reverse of a letter is just a letter. If the letter length isn't one, or if the string length isn't one, it joins the last letter of the string, input, with the reverse of the substring of input starting from the first letter to the second to last letter. This new substring is the input, and the new reverse function. This process will keep on repeating until the substring supplied to the reverse function is equal to one, where it will return input. Here's a step-by-step -step method of how this function works. We start off with hello. The O in hello goes to the beginning, so it becomes O-H-E-L-L. -L. After that, we take the L in hell and we put it after the O, so it becomes O-L-H-E-L. -L. 
After that, it becomes O-L-L-H-E using the same process as before, and finally it becomes O-L-L-E-H. This is known as a recursive function because it uses itself within the function, as we see here. In the previous slide, we created a reverse function that required the length of the string input. However, you don't need to do that because it is actually unnecessary. This new reverse function uses the old reverse function and automatically provides the length of the string input. This is known as abstraction. You're making it easier for someone to use a reverse function by requiring less parameters, as we see here. Note that the example we showed below, or in, this, uh, in the last couple of slides, was a more complex version of implementing a function. In reality, we will not be using or implementing those difficult functions that use recursion. Instead, the exercises will be much simpler, so don't fret too much. So the exercises, head over to snap.berkeley.edu slash snap slash snap.html to complete these exercises. Level 1 exercise. These questions should be pretty easy for you. Factorial. Create a function that returns the factorial of a number. Factorial of the number is a product of all the numbers below it, until 1. If you were in your previous class, you probably know what this means. For example, the factorial of 4 is 24 because 4 times 3 times 2 plus 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 24. And we see that the reporter reports 24. This is the solution of the previous exercise. Here we can see that the temporary variable product is created also known as a script variable. Number is an input in the factorial function. We set product equal to one. Remember product is a script variable, so it's temporary. And now we use a for loop to iterate through from one to the number itself that was inputted. And we set product equal to product times that number. And at the end, we report product. So take a minute to understand what exactly this function is doing if you do not finish factorial before. Next exercise, create a function that draws a triangle on the stage. The triangle's sides should be 100 steps long, and the sprite should be facing left when it starts. It should also be at the center of the screen. This is the solution to the previous problem. There are no parameters in this case, so you set the pen down, you go to a certain x position, you point in a certain direction, and for using a for loop from 1 to 3, you can move 100 steps, turn 120 degrees, and then keep on going forever, or rather for the iteration of the for loop. So this means it will move 100 steps and turn three times. Level two questions. These questions should be of medium difficulty. One to number sum. Create a function that reports the sum of the numbers from one to a given number. For example, if you put in four, the function would say that the answer is 10 because four plus three plus two plus one equals 10. This is the solution. And the first one, we can see that one to number plus the input of the number uh, is the function itself. So number in this case is a parameter. We can create a script variable called total, and we can use a for loop that goes from one to the number inputted. We set total equal to total plus i. In this case, is the temporary variable inside of the for loop. If this keeps on going forever or until the length of number, this can report the total. Another way to do this is by using the second one. The second solution reports a block, in this case, which is number plus one times the number itself divided by two. That is a simpler way of doing the same thing we saw in the first solution. Shapes. Make a function that draws a regular polygon with a given number of sides. For example, if you put in six, a hexagon will be drawn. This requires some interesting geometry. If you can't figure it out, ask your tutor for a hint. Or in this case, you can ask us in the Discord server. Solution in the previous exercise. Using a parameter, sides, we put the pen down, and we go from one to sides in the for loop. We move 30 steps each time, and we turn 360 degrees divided by sides degrees. And this will mean that we will successfully complete the shape that we saw before, in this case, the hexagon. Level 3 questions. These questions are the most difficult, 
and you'll try to use you'll need to use a bunch of different concepts together in order to solve them. Coin flip trip. Create a function that simulates a single flip of a coin and report if the flip resulted in heads or tails. Hint, you'll need to use a pick random function in order to complete this. So the solution to the previous exercise, assuming you had a go at it, there are no parameters here, but you create a script variable called result. You set result equal to pick random one to two. So you pick one or two. And if the result equals one, you report heads. Otherwise you report tails. Next one is heads and tails. Create a function that simulates a coin flip for some amount of times, a parameter called flips and reports slash returns the number of heads and tails there were. Again, you'll need to use a pick random function and some counter variables, other known, otherwise known as script variables to complete this. Another challenge is to use a coin flip function from the previous exercise inside of this one. This is the solution to the previous exercise. Here we have one parameter called flips. We create a skip variable, number of heads, number of tails, and result. So a total of three uh, script variables. For i to one, uh, from i equals one to flips, which is in this case the parameter, we set result equal to pick random one or two. So result is either becoming one or two. And if result equals one, set the number of heads to number of heads plus one. Otherwise, set the number of tails to number of tails plus one. Report join head number of heads to the number of heads and join the number of tails to the number of tails. We can use this and we can underst also understand that it's pretty similar to the previous exercise, the coin flip trip. This presentation is owned by Codivate Incorporated. For more information, you can email us at team.codivate.org. If you have any questions regarding the material covered in this presentation or other presentations, you can ask in our Discord server. Thank you for watching.